Hello to everyone taking in this short webinar um, about pixel art. You don't need to be an artist to make art. Really, I am not doing much more than sharing some awesome people that I have found along my travels and uh, who do this way better than me. And I think everybody should know about them. So you know me, I'm Leah, and uh, I hate doing this kind of stuff, but I love sharing. So if you need to email me or have any more questions, you know where to find me. So our easiest tools to use when we're doing any kind of drawing and things like that are Google Drawings. Um, Google Drawings are nice because they are one sheet of paper. And so you can create short activities for the kids to do or a drawing space for them to work on. And Google Sheets. Who knew that you would be able to do art in Google Sheets? I'm going to share a Google Sheet guru with you who uh, gives us access to all kinds of templates. So my three favorite people to follow, and actually I forgot about a fourth one, um, are Tony Vincent. He has a Shapegrams website as well as a website called Learning in Hand, which the links are to follow. Darren Malte. He's an Alberta boy from Leduc. He's another ed tech, and uh, he is an amazing digital artist. The stuff that he does is phenomenal, and he's very good at breaking it down for people to be able to follow along and understand the steps to be able to create their own. And Alice Keeler, who is the Google Sheets guru, um, who we get lots of free templates from, and really with Alice Keeler, you don't have to know how to do it, you just make a copy and modify it to fit your stuff. So don't worry about formulas, don't worry about formatting, it's all there for you. And she's very good at giving the instructions to follow along. Uh, the last one I forgot is Christine Pinto, and I'll have to add that to the presentation afterwards. So Tony Vincent, Vincent is the first one up, and I'm just going to show you his couple of websites. So his Shapegrams, um, he has a website. He does offer, you know, you can subscribe to it and purchase more of his things. But he does offer uh, two or three Shapegrams, I think, in that you are able to make a copy of free of charge. And I think it's a great way to get started. He's very good about creating um, a Google drawing and he shows you the drawing on the left and then asks you to replicate it on the right. It's a really easy way to kind of get things going and knowing how easy it is to create things in Google Drawings. He's very good at explaining things and you can watch the video, lots of things that you can do with Tony Vincent. So he's awesome. And his... Um, other web page is called learninginhand.com and he goes through lots of very cool things. Uh, my favorite that I have been working on for a very long time is trying to cartoon myself. So basically what you do is you take a picture of yourself and then you stick it in a Google drawing and then you try and trace over top of it. It works better in an iPad. Uh, here is Here's mine. Um, you know, it needs work. But I took a picture of myself and I have been working on tracing with the line tool and the polyline tool because when you create a polyline, uh, you're able to draw it the way you want, but then you can fill it in afterwards. If you just do lines, then you're not able to fill like my lovely lips here. Uh, and then the neat thing is, is you can grab that picture and move it out of the way and see what you're left with. So, you know, a little bit of work that needs to be done, but that's all right. Practice makes perfect. So that is the cartoon me one. And that's, I really like Tony Vincent for those two things. Our next one is Darren Malte. Darren is our Alberta boy. He has, uh, most of you have heard of his website that he 
works on with several other tech people in his division. Um, it is called Engaging Students and Black Gold is the division. And he has this whole section on digital design and art. And the things that he is able to do on here is, is very cool. And he gets you to use the paint format and, you know, he creates all kinds of digital copies that you can take. And what I love about that is he's, he just offers them up. So I took this ladybug one and I use this to open it and it's right here. And what I can do is I can open it with Google drawings. And then I am able to make a copy of it myself. Um, but you can see the tools and, you know, triangles and circles. So basically these are all just shapes that he's put together to create this ladybug. So a good start for students. And, you know, a lot of times the kids are like, oh, I'm done this. What do I do now? So the idea of adding a Google drawing that they can try and do themselves and copy just gets them that more dexterous with the mouse um, or the touchpad and shows them the possibilities that they have. It's nice for non-artists because when you're a non-artist like myself, I love to copy and trace and do things like that. And it still makes me feel like I'm a great artist or once the kids get the hang of it, if they are an artist, then they're able to create their own. So I really like that about Darren's um, site. And, you know, he goes from very simple from a ladybug to like some of these are amazing. And uh, he also talks about making their own stickers and scenes and all kinds of stuff. So really great um, resource. So that's Darren. My next one is Alice Keeler. And Alice Keeler is the pixel art. She's the sheets guru. And um, she has a website, alicekeeler.com. It's teacher tech. And the link is in the slide presentation that I'll post the link to. And all I did here was I went to templates and templates here. And here are the um, templates. Literally, you just click on it and it wants you to make a copy and then it saves it into your Google Drive for you to do the things with. So the top few that I've looked at and thought were pretty cool. And then um, if you want all of the instructions, if you go to the post about it or the link is right here, the pixel art template, it will take you to the post that explains how it's done. Um, I'll do the easiest one, which is the pumpkin art. So the pumpkin art is a fall one that you can do. There are three different tabs here at the bottom. And basically what it does is it takes conditional formatting and conditional formatting means that if you put this into the square, it does this. And so to look at it, I can go conditional formatting. So I went format, conditional formatting. And over here on the side, here are my rules. So if I type in the number one in the box, it's going to be red. If I type a two, it's going to be this. And it uses all of these numbers. Now, the other thing I can do is they've also been... Um, there, they have other rules. They have, she's used the word pumpkin. And so if you put a P in there, it's going to be this color. If you put a U in there. And so you are able to, within this sheet, make your own pictures of things by figuring out. Okay. So if that's a U, I type a U in there, go to my next square and it changes color. So I have to figure out what my letter will, what color it will change to and then figure out how I'm going to maybe copy this pumpkin or design my own. So that was pumpkin number one. Pumpkin number two is a challenge, not actually a pumpkin. Um, and you can create your own here. In the last tab, there's a spot for you to write your pumpkin story. 
and then to create your picture of your pumpkin. So that's the, the pixel art one. Another one that is a neat one, it's for littles practicing spelling. And again, this is not something that you need to know what the conditioning rules are. Otherwise, you'll just kind of go crazy. But basically, there is one tab for the students to work in and one tab for the teacher to work in. So you put your words here that you are going to use for your spelling list. And we've just added a bunch to the ones that she already had there. But you can see, okay, so I'm going to remember the first two, always around because. So I am now going to practice my spelling words. So I'm going to write the word because. And because is a hard one, so I'm going to um, spell it like that, and I'm going to go to my next cell. And you can see that nothing happened to that. So... I'm going to type it again. Oh, let's try and spell it right. Because I'm going to go to my next one. You'll notice that because I spelled it right, the conditional formatting um, turned it green. So that's my self checker. I can practice my spelling words uh, a whole bunch of times. Um, I can't remember what my other ones were. Let me go back and check and see. So a student could have their list beside them on a piece of paper, or somebody could be saying it and around and that one was good and you know what I can use this whole um, sheet here right to it goes so from a one to I 30 so all the way from here all the way down to 30 to I 30 anywhere in this space that I type my spelling words. If they're correct, they'll turn green. If they're not, they'll stay where they are. So cold and does. So cold and does. Nope. Does. Nope. Does. Yep. Okay. And it doesn't matter whether I use um, enter or if I use um, just moving it to the, another cell with my arrow keys the conditional formatting has it all lined up for me already. Then if the kids are getting really good at that, then you could just give them a copy of this conditioning, conditional formatting template. And the template is already set up. So if I show you my format, conditional formatting, you can see all of the colors that are being used and the numbers. And so I have to use those um, numbers to create myself, my art, whatever it is that I'm going to do. So if I put 55 in there, go to the next one, it's going to turn it back. 66, 88, 44. So you might want to have them sketch out a picture or, you know, create something. And uh, for those that are into Minecraft, I think this kind of thing will be right up their alley because it's sort of the same idea to, to build things, right? Um, let's go back to this. So Alice Keeler, Darren Malte. And Tony Vincent, those are my top three people. I'm going to add one more. That was Christine Pinto. And Christine works a lot with littles. So she um, has a lot of ideas and templates that she shares for working with really, you know, kindergarten, grade one, grade two kind of ideas. She uses a lot of Google Slides but I will add her in there as another person to check out. And I hope this was helpful and uh, something that you are, you know, kind of interested in. It's a lot of fun. And I think it's a really neat way to start, especially the pixel art and things like that. It's a good way to get kids starting to understand the formula and the things that you can do um, almost like a, you know, the beginning of programming type of thing. So these are some great tools and people that I follow in order to 
really expand my horizons when it comes to using your Chromebooks for art. So hope you've enjoyed this and I will post this at the end of the video. Thanks. Have a good day.